Well, hello and welcome back. Um, lesson number five, the true stratigraphic thickness of rock layers, how to measure that and how to practically do this. So let's go over this a little bit. Um, so tilted rock layers, how thick are they really? You know, what is the thickness measurement? Um, so if you have a horizontal rock layer, um, that's pretty straightforward, right? If you can have some kind of a measurement device, you would say like a you know, large ruler, an incredible long tape to drop into a valley. You know, it's, it's somewhat of a, a vertical system. That's how you would measure this one. That's def definitely vertical. And you would get the true thickness of how thick those beds are right there. Um, what if my rock layers are standing up on end and are vertical, like in this one? Okay, how would you measure that? Of course, um, would be perpendicular to the bedding. So here I would have my ruler or meter stick laying horizontal in this case, and I would get the true thickness, right? Um, but what if I have something like that stuff that dips? Okay, what's the thickness of those beds? Well, probably not vertical measurement. Um, that doesn't sound right. And most likely also not horizontal measurement because it doesn't sound right either. So how would you measure the thickness of a tilting bed? Well, perpendicular to the dip. With other words, that where your ruler needs to go, perpendicular to your dip line, and that would be the true thickness of your beds. Okay, at least we have a visual now, but how do we do this practically then in the field? Well, there are other techniques that geologists can use to do these measurements in the field for true thickness on tilted beds. The instrument, believe it or not, is called a Jacob staff. Um, what's a Jacob staff? Well, picture a long meter stick, usually longer than one meter, although maybe it's a two meter stick, some, something like that. But it also has an attached or uh, a fixed inclinometer to it. Um, something like that. You know, have a, have a meter stick with an inclinometer kind of perpendicular to the meter stick here attached to this and then a, a hanging weight or so that shows you uh, what the dip is once you lean that meter stick to one side or the other. So let's lean it a little bit and what's happening now. My my little um, inclinometer there points then into the leaning direction. The neat part is you has a sight on it. You can now sight along that straight edge and hit a target on the ground somewhere while holding it at a certain angle. Um, that is basically a Jacob staff. Um, so how does this beast work? You know, you hold it at the dip angle. So you measure the dip first. You need to know the dip. You hold it at the dip angle. You need to walk, however, parallel to the dip, siding down there, and you then you get starting to get the true thickness as you do that, right? So you sight along the edge right there, and then um, whatever target it is would be your next measurement. And with each measurement, you add one length of the Jacob staff to the thickness of the bed. All right, let's do this practically. Here is my theoretical dipping beds, and we need to have a geologist. So um, that measures, first of all, the strike and dip. Right, so you're gonna have the strike and dip, and let's assume I'm looking um, into the screen here, really parallel to the strike, so my dip always perpendicular to that. So I measure that, and then I have my geologist with a Jacob staff here, 
um, be sure that you are perpendicular to the strike and parallel to the dip when you do this measurement. And that geologist, right, holds the Jacob staff at that measure dip angle. A little meter here tells her that. Now he holds it. And then she sights. Um, take a straight line sight right there. And it will hit a spot somewhere there. So X marks the spot, right? Um, so mark that spot or remember where that spot is because it will walk toward it. Now, do you need to pace? Not really, because you are adding just Jacob's status, uh, stick uh, length. So there is no pacing actually required with this activity, right? Now, what do you do once you mark the spot? Well, if you want to measure the thickness of all these tilted beds from here to there to whenever the tilted beds ends, you need to repeat that. So you're going to walk over to the spot you just have sighted or marked, and you repeat the same thing again. You know, hold it at the dip angle, take a straight line sight, another spot, and just count how many times you do this because with every every iteration you add another length of the Jacob staff to the thickness of your layered beds. Right? So you finish this one, you do this over and over again until you finish measuring the thickness of your beds. Now, the true thickness of whatever the true thickness of these tilted layers are, as you want to measure, of course, you can then subdivide it into the various layers if you want to describe them. But the true thickness is the number of Jacob staff heights. So there's really no paces that you need to count that are involved in that system. But... And for it to work, you need to be sure you are perpendicular to the strike and parallel to the dip when you do these measurements. Okay, so a little bit about Jacob stuff. It is the common method. It is worded in method books a lot. Here is kind of an entry of a very, very famous field methods book. If you can find this one, I would say get a copy. It is out of print forever. Um, you can only get used once. It's the Manual of Field Geology. Uh, 1962 by R. R. Compton. It's a classic. Um, you should grab it. But he describes a plethora of methods you can use. Among them is, of course, the Jacob staff. And he, he says it, you know, hold it at the dip angle. You see the perpendicular um, siding here. Side across the top, let's say the Jacob staff here is 1.5 meters long, and then the thickness of these beds from his feet to there is 1.5 meters. Of course, you can also attach an inclinometer. Now, true Jacob staffs don't have this one affixed at a certain height, you can move it around to come up with your own height of the Jacob staff. So, this is just an entry here. Uh, out of this Compton textbook, you know that is what you what you do. Uh, in a sense, they also make Jacob staff where you can attach your brunt into it. Remember, your brunt has an inclinometer. This is really great, and then you can kind of hold it to a certain height, whatever that is in centimeters or inches, and you again side down um, perpendicular to the staff, and then incline you have set in your Brunton compass. And the Brunton, you already know, is a great sighting instrument. So it can be used in conjunction with a Brunton. And this is how it looks like in the field. You know, when geologists do the measurement of certain beds, you hold it uh, at the angle of the dip, you sight it, you walk to the next spot, and you just add the links, you know, from the bottom of the thing 
to wherever you clamped your Brunton to and how often do you have to do this and then that is the thickness, the true thickness of your of your bed. Oh, yeah, they are adjustable in professional Jacob staffs. All right, now, when you do reconnaissance work, you don't want to necessarily haul a Jacob staff along. I mean, it's cumbersome. And enough with one backpack, and now you should have another inst in instrument along so sometimes you just walk along very lightly packed with your brunton can you use a method to measure true thickness if you just have a brunton yes you can it's not quite as accurate but it does work and so no jacob staff no problem as long as you have a brunton transit so let's show you how this works right so here again I have my tilted beds. Remember, I need to be parallel to the dip and perpendicular to the strike for this measurement to work. All right, I'm start again. I need to get the strike and dip measure somehow. At least now the important numbers is a dip. I need to have that one. Well, I need to be sure when I do the measurement that R M I M perpendicular to the strike in parallel to the dip when I walk along. So that has not gone away. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to use my Brunton compass and I set my inclinometer to that dip I just have measured. Actually, if I just have measured the dip, my Brunton should still retain the actual dip in the inclinometer. And now what I need to do is I need to make a straight line sight by looking at the inclinometer and making sure that little bubble, even with the tilt now adjusted in the Brunton, is level between the two marks. I'm basically looking down now because I'm looking right down the dip, right? I set my Brunton to the inclinometer dip angle, and then while watching the bubble, I'm siding uh, in the direction that the Brunton takes me. So I'm going to have an inclined siding, and again, I'm going to see a spot on the ground. It's going to be a little bit more cumbersome because now I have to again fight with keeping the bubble aligned while siding at the same time, so you need to do multitasking. And there you have it. So what's then my Jacob staff? What's my height here? Well, ta-da, something you already know, right? There's no need no math for, for thickness calculation. It is your eye height. Oh, you have a built-in measure. The eye height is your built-in Jacob staff measure. So as long as you know your eye height, that method works actually pretty good, right? So let's say your eye height is 5 feet and 8 inches. That is your Jacob staff height. Okay, now how do we get from that to the true thickness? And the Jacob staff I could lean, you going to have a hard time leaning, right, without falling over. So that ain't working especially if, if you have a very, very steep dip angle. Well, something like that. You would really need to lean. Well, let's kind of look at the true thickness. The true thickness would be perpendicular. Here's my right angle. Perpendicular to my line of sight. And my feet, of course, were my by my soles of my shoes when my measurement starts. So how do I know that that thickness, that length? Do you have to kind of have the line of sight and somebody else need to be there with a tape measure? Or how, how do I do this? Well, let's kind of resolve this using trigonometry. You know, point A, that your eyeballs. Point B, this is where the thickness kind of comes in and see the soles of your shoes. Yeah.
Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, if we use trig, we can calculate this thickness because I have one length right there and of a triangle. That's my eye height. And I also have an angle here. I have the dip angle. So the true thickness, which is this line, the BC line, would then be equal to, well, my eye height, AC, we already guessed that one, and the cosine of my dip angle. Okay, eye height times the cosine of the dip angle, and then you would get the true thickness in that little model here. Wow. Okay. Now, you're going to do with this method, you're going to do the same thing over and over again until you measured whatever thickness you need to measure. You know, stand in the spot, either next spot. The dip angle here is constant, doesn't change. So you leave it and you walk then forward. Remember, perpendicular to strike, parallel to dip. Always. Now, do you need a calculator? That's a big question. You can, but you don't have to because I'm going to show you something really, really nifty. Yes, we need to do this calculation, I height times cosine of the dip angle. And you wonder, how will I ever figure this one without a calculator? This is nuts. Well, use a handy dandy nomogram a handy dandy nomogram for true thickness there it is how does a nomogram work well nomogram is basically a paper calculator and you do not need a um, electronic device to get your answer so let's sort of show you how this nomogram works right i have three scales on here i have the dip in degrees Right down here, I have my eye height kind of at a tilted scale, as you see here. And I have the true thickness of my bed in centimeters. All right, let's kind of work with this one. And let's say I measure a dip angle of 33 degrees. Okay, how do you use a nomogram then to figure out what the true height is of that bed? the true thickness right here. Well, first of all, we're going to go to the scale that says dip, and we're going to mark the 33 degrees with a little dot on that scale. 33, here you have it. And what's the next measure? We need to have one more measure. Well, of course, your eye height, 5 feet 8 inches. Great, but wait, wait, units. The units on the scale and centimeters. Now, if you have done this correctly in your field notebook, and as I told you, put in your eye height and your pace in two units, the British units and the metric units, it shouldn't be a problem. Otherwise, you're now stuck with converting your eye height two centimeters. Well, you've got to do this. Now you might need a calculator. But if you've written it in your no notebook as you're supposed to, both in metric and in British units, you're just going to use now the metric unit. All right. And for five feet, eight inches, it comes out to be 173 centimeters. So where do I plot my next point? Uh, in the eye height scale, which is the short one, I'm going to plot 173 centimeters right there. Now i got two dots. What's next? A straight edge. And please use a straight edge to do this. What am I doing? I'm going to connect those two dots and extend my straight edge line a little further so it intersects with my third scale. Ah, all right, and the answer without fancy calculator that can do cosine, the answer right now is a direct resolve of where this line now intersect, intersects 
my connection line intersects with the third scale. And in this case, I see here right between those, it's at the 145 centimeter point. So my true thickness with these measures, a degree of 33 um, uh, on the dip, and an eye height of 173 centimeters would resolve to a true thickness of 145 centimeters. Now here's a neat thing. If my dip is consistent and doesn't change over a distance, I need to do this little conversion, use this nomograph only once because all the other triangles will be the same as I move forward and my true thickness per movement will always be 145 centimeters. Yeah. Neat, huh? Now we just need to find a spot where we can practice that. Well, there is a place where the road cut or the walkway is indeed parallel to the dip and perpendicular to the strike. And that happens to be at Dinosaur Ridge, right there where we cut with the Alameda Parkway through the Dinosaur Ridge. This is a very good approximation of a perpendicular cut through the strike direction. So in other words, this is my approximate strike here, um, strike direction, and this is my approximate dip, and it's beautiful. goes right along that, that little curve here. So um, let's take a look. What can we see? Well, if we look toward the north, you can see beautifully tilted beds, we would like to know what the true thickness of these beds are. Not only for the whole thing, you know, from here to there, but, you know, what's the thickness from here? Looks like the rock type changes. What's the th thickness of this bed? And what's the thickness of that stuff on top? Because it looks like just from looking at it, I have three units here that I can already break out. Um, if I look, of course, to the south side, the same is true, but there are plenty of places right here when you can measure strike and dip to verify um, that you are walking in the right direction and what the dip angle that you have to set on your Brunton is supposed to be, right? So remember, when you do your measurement, you walk along parallel to dip and perpendicular to strike exactly. Now, if you're off with one of one or two, or three, or even five degrees, I don't think you will be in the create a huge error. But this is literally your direction. Now, how long do do we do this? Well, we're just staying within that curve area. Really, don't fall off the edge here. Don't fall off the edge here. So basically. That's the whole distance we are going, which doesn't seem very, very far. And this, my friends, ends the little introduction of measuring true stratigraphic thicknesses.